Paul at the University of Michigan. And uh, I am working on hydrodynamic simulation and time dependent photonizations modeling our subway experiments at follow. And uh, uh, in the uh, star forming uh, galaxy, we have uh, the formation of a surface turbulence uh, outflow, uh, which typically have a uh, complex uh, structures, uh, complex temperatures, multi temperature structures. In this example, in, uh, in X ray, we see a present of hot uh, superwind uh, super region, which have temperature of the power of sevens. And infrared image and spitzer image show the region with between 100 and 1000 kelvins dusty region. Also, in the optical, we see uh, some uh, regions with warm region, 10,000 10, kelvins. And here, this you see a schematic view of cell performance regions. And uh, typically, the typical assumptions for uh, uh, super winds is adiabatic solutions. In these assumptions, which firstly are used by Chavira and Kelech. Uh, the adiabatic winds uh, decrease by radius as a function of uh, density as a function of uh, power of minus two and temperature as a power of uh, minus four over three. However, uh, there is several observations that show there is a, a suppressed superwind and strong coolings, which cannot explain by adiabatic assumptions. Uh, there is a model, a semi-analytic model by uh, Silich in 2004. They use, uh, they incorporate a uh, uh, radiative cooling functions, and uh, by this uh, radiative cooling function, it shows a departure from adiabatic solution, implied that uh, cooling depends on the, uh, the ionizing and also metallicity. And uh, in our work, also, we found that this depends on mass loading rate and wind velocities. And in the service, uh, there is uh, super winds so could have four regions and uh, the first regions here you see there is a free expanding fin regions and after that we have the formation of hot bubble and then a, a, a bit higher density which has is a call also shell and after that there is ambient medium this, this is a typical um, four region which we see we may see in the super winds regions and to implement uh, our harder dynamic simulation we consider a, a galactic scale uh, Outflow uh, driven by a service driven feedbacks uh, from a specially symmetric super stellar cluster characterized by a solar cluster radius and mass loading rate, uh, wind terminal velocity, also the ambient condition, ambient density, and temperatures. And also, we use uh, ionizing luminosity, which produced by a service uh, 99s, and also. In this uh, hydrodynamic simulation, it's, it's coupled uh, to radiative cooling function and photoionization, uh, photoheating functions, uh, which built in atomic and chemistry cooling package uh, built by uh, Bill Gray. And in this atomic cooling package, they use also ion by ion cooling efficiency uh, from atomic data and also the uh, heating efficiency uh, calculated using uh, photoionization cross sections and also SED, which made by service uh, 99s. And by doing this, uh, we did the hydrodynamic dynamic simulations. Here you see, in this figure, you see uh, the temperature profile and density profiles for one of these examples. In low velocity, you see there is a departure from adiabatic solution, uh, adiabatic solution, adiabatic solution shown by uh, dashed lines. And also there is in these websites, which the link is here, uh, you see um, there is a bigger uh, grade of simulation. It shows uh, dependence on mass loading rate. Here you see by increasing mass loading rate, we increase coolings. Also by increasing metallicity, we increase coolings. Also we have also uh, wind thermal velocity, which by reducing wind thermal velocity, we also increase coolings. And also I made photonization, which I will Talk later during the my talk I will present. And here there is an example of it adiabatic uh, bubbles and uh, catastrophic coolings with bubble and catastrophic cooling without bubble. And, and the dot line, dot red line, they show the adiabatic predictions. And here you see uh, what is the difference and how it the radiative cooling departed from the adiabatics coolings.
And this difference, which show here, we calculated for free expanding beans. And here in this example, in these plots, I show the regions where there is uh, adiabatic feed bubble, adiabatic pressure confine, adiabatic cooling, and uh, catastrophic cooling with bubbles. And this ratio is a ratio of uh, wind uh, temperature of free expanding wind. It's calculated by hydrodynamics and it's over the adiabatic uh, predictions. And here we see, I'll say here is in the old publication, I presented the more regions and we see higher mass loading rate and lower wind thermal velocity uh, contribute to a strong cooling in free expanding things. Also, we see um, metallicity, also increasing metallicity, increase coolings. And uh, for photonization modeling, I uh, we first did photonization plus coalitionizations, and I incorporate both density and temperature profile generated by mayhem together by ionizing ACD made by service 99s uh, to compute uh, photoionization, which is also, I didn't consider any equilibrium ionization for in the first steps, which produce photoionization plus uh, collision ionization. And here is, you see the result of uh, photoionization plus collision ionization. On the left, you see temperature profile for one of our example. Uh, also, you see there is a, on the left panel, there is emissivity, which calculated by uh, photonization models. And on top, there is pure, pure photonization without collision ionization effects. And on uh, bottom panel, CPI is uh, collision ionization uh, combined with photonizations. And here you see what is a, there is mm, different between uh, photonization without collision ionization, photonization plus collisionizations. And in the next step, say we are incorporates both temperature and te uh, density and also non-equilibrium ionization states, which calculated by our hydrodynamic simulation with flash. And I calculated uh, the uh, emissivity here in the bottom panel is NEI plus PI, and in middle is collision ionization plus photonization. And you as you see, how is it different between non-equilibrium photonization and non-equilibrium and uh, equilibrium Photonization plus collision ionizations. And uh, um, in order to have uh, compare with observations, I calculated for uh, radiative bonded, then radiative bonded model and density bonded model, the luminosity. And uh, this luminosity uh, used to build uh, BPT uh, diagnostic diagrams. And for BPT diagnostic diagrams, uh, I plotted oxygen three versus nitrogen two and sulfur two. And as you see, there is a good agreement with the typical region where we have a suburbs regions below red line in BP diagram, the suburbs region and above red line, there is active uh, galactic regions. And similar to optical BP diagram, I made also UV diagnostic diagram uh, using the ultraviolet emission lines, which typically uh, observed in a surface galaxy. And recently there is some diagnostic diagram they built using these uh, emission lines to separate between active and a surface galaxy. And in this diagnostic diagram, you see the highest UV lines change by metal. You see how it's different for different model with uh, cooling and catastrophic cooling with bubble. As you see, by, by increasing metallicity, we uh, reduce oxygen and also we change carbon-4. Uh, other important things are highly ionized uh, doublet oxygen-6, which originate from shock and collision ionization regions. And recently, Will Gray uh, in his paper published in 2019 suggested that it could be a useful diagnosis of uh, catastrophic regions and I explore uh, how is dependence this line on catastrophic regions. And finally, uh, our future directions is uh, to implement, to incorporate radiative transfer calculation to 
into our uh, hydrodynamic simulation. Uh, in our hydrodynamic simulations, uh, the SED uh, reduce as a using a simple assumption of uh, R minus two. So by uh, calculating opacity, uh, we use this equation and we reduce the SED and it will be a proper implementation of the radiative cooling and photonization process. So, but because uh, we have in this low, the field expanding wind region, we have low density. So our current assumption is correct, but for high density, this assumption is not correct. And here is a concluding uh, remark of our, my, per, my presentations. Uh, we have conducted hydrodynamic simulation at service servants uh, super wind using a mayhem package built, built on flash and to study formation of radiative coolant winds and also formation of hot bubble. And we saw dependence of catastrophic cooling on different wind parameter, ambient density, or mass loading rate, and metallicity. And in our paper, which recently published in AppJ, uh, we presented our result of for collisionization plus photonization. And in next paper, which we'll, we'll submit soon, there is a combined NEI plus PI, which non-equilibrium photonizations. And we also have plan to incorporate a radiative transfer to our hydrodynamic simulation in future, also doing the radiate, incorporate radiative dependent SED to our calculation. Okay. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question, I can answer. Oh, that's spot on time. Thank you very much. Uh, so there is there is time for a few questions. Anyone in the chat or just raise your hand. I wasn't clear to me whether when you use flash, you uh, you 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 make it work in uh, in spherical coordinates. You uh, generally because you didn't specify uh, the the uh, accuracy or the uh, numerical setup uh, of flash. Uh, yeah, they you... implemented this in flash, but it's a modified version of flash. Uh, because in flash there is no radiative cooling function, photoheating function, and uh, Will Gray, oh. which is the third author, he incorporated this radiative cooling and photoheating function to flash, so it's a modified flash, which uh, okay. he called it mayhem. So using this modified right, flash. okay, I, I I didn't get that the there is no no cooling function at all actually. So, okay, but but what about what about the grid? The, 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 the did you use uh, the, the the spherical uh, yeah, coordinates? Spherical coordinate, the, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mahavir Sharma, you had a question. Uh, yes, actually. So uh, I was wondering what sort of temperature profiles uh, emerge as a function of radius for superwinds out of this implementation? The yeah, initial temperature profile is a, uh, is a con the temperature, ambient temperature, but after when we run the hydrodynamic simulations, uh, this you see that right now is ambient temperatures uh, 10 to the power of four, but after running this, Simulation is we have the temperature profile which calculated by flash and we use this temperature profile in our the final temperature profile in our photonization and calculation by Kelody. Okay, yeah, thanks. So I probably missed, but maybe you would have compared with the soft X ray emission in the galaxies, so right? Yes, I, I didn't show here, but here you see this bubble here on the orange. This is hot bubble, which is we see an X-ray, but the 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 order before that is a lower temperature. temperature where the temperature is uh, below uh, ten to the power of five. It is what we see optical. So that ten to the power of seven, which what we see in uh, X-ray. So here we didn't uh, do a calculation for uh, emissivity for X-ray, but we did calculation for UV. So here in oxygen six, uh, we see what we produce by uh, that's uh, temperature. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay, uh, thanks very much. Okay. Wow, okay, Thank, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot.